Hey folks, Green Stuff Gav here. We're back with painting another random miniature from the box. So, as previously mentioned, this here is a box of random miniatures. So stuff I've sculpted, uh, stuff I've 3D printed, we print miniature stuff, all sorts of random. So I thought we'd have a rummage, pick something out, paint it. So we're going to have a good old rummage. And then, yeah, we're going to pick out stuff that's already painted. Okay. So from a handful of minis, I'm going to pick out this one. Oh, that's cool. This is a Wii Print Mini miniature. Very cyberpunk guy in a suit. So yeah, we'll see if we can get a base together, get this guy painted up. Right, how to rummage in the box. There's a few different options we got for bases, as well as sculpt on our own. But I decided I'm going to use one of these Games Workshop ones. Now I've used a lot of these, uh, especially across the Escher army I'm working on at the moment. But whereas I normally do them silver, what I'm thinking is painting um, lights on the inside of this section. And then it'll almost make it look more of a, um, how do you say, more of a uh, cyberpunk base. And then he can stand on there nice. I think that's going to work well. So unusually, I'm actually not going to uh, glue him in place. We're going to undercoat him, paint the base separately, paint him on, and then I might try some OSL. Right, so let's go get some undercoating done. So here we are, undercoated in Colorforge's matte black. Lovely, lovely, lovely undercoat, as we can see. It's come out really nice. Thought we'd start with the base, however, so we can glue them to it and then um, work from there. As per usual, We'll go into super fast forward mode. So we're going to start with some dry brushing. Is I know I was going to go. I'm going to go away from um, just basic metals, but um, I think it would look really nice to frame the um, the concrete with a nice metallic. So it's just simple dry brushing done first. Um, in the end, it doesn't make a difference, but. You know, I didn't know the direction I was going in. So we're mixing Wraithbone with um, uh, Cadian Flesh just to give us like a, an off-white colour. I was considering grey, but a grey would be far too much like uh, actual concrete and not like a Neo-Tokyo. And while that dries, we're going to put some um, almost like a uh, neon strip in starting with the uh, blue we can see we've been not very tidy about this because we wanted to give it like a subtle glow effect um, again we tidied this up a bit because it's a bit too messy but yeah so we're going up to like a, a bonish off-white i think will really give us uh, a contrast to a the usual way of painting these and b like say a, a nice um, cyberpunk city look and also while we're here we're mixing this bone colour in with the blue and that will give us our glowy effect so we're just going to keep working it up, up all the way up to off white oh, an actual white mixed in so you see each time we're putting these colours in we're going thinner uh, a thinner line so that 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 will really give like the the neon effect you sort of your your glowy neon c but we're going to continue just tidying up the um the floor panel to give us a nice clean look you can go for like your dingy browns and greys for um, 
some cyberpunk cities, but for this guy, he's quite um, looks quite classy. So there's a couple of pop rivets here, but instead I thought they'd be nice as little neon lights. So we're going to mix in a touch of green just to give them a spot color, just help them stand out a bit. And then we're highlighting around the edge of the metal plate with the highlight color. Something we do here, here as well. Just sort of um, trailing it along the edge and that will give us, um, again, the, the nice sort of highlight, uh, the glowing effect. It's a little bit messy here, but we'll, we'll do tidy up in a minute. But we'll also be repeating this technique uh, technique on the any model any bits of the model that overhang and that will really aid the glowing effect so here you see we're tidying up still leaving some of the the, the white edge in some of the blue just to make it a bit more subtle because you don't don't want to go over the top with it and then final highlighting on the edges the panels touch of white not um sharp edge highlighting but enough of a blend just to give it some um, color variation that works all right so we glue the guy on and i was going to go for a grays or perhaps blues but I thought for a change of pace, we haven't done pink. So we're going pink horror straight over the undercoat. Quite a thin coat because um, obviously where acrylic, water-based acrylics translucent will will do um, a couple of layers and then each layer will give us some um, basic shadows. Trying to be as tidy as possible, but doesn't matter if we go, if we, uh, go on other bits for these first colors also helps to um you see here I'm, i was working out if i was going to leave the panel lines for the suit but i decided to go into them with the darkest pink um, instead of leaving them black could go for like a cell shaded look and leave real sharp black edging but um i think it works better without so see full coverage Well, while that dries, we'll go and get some skin tone down. This is rat skin flesh. Um, this pot's actually on the way out. You can see I'm struggling to get a decent um, paint that isn't just water out of it. There's only a couple of bits of flesh on this guy, sort of fingers and his face. Again, we're using the um, translucence to give us some detailing, almost some some uh, shadow, some shading. Right. So second coat of pink horror, we can really see here like the difference where obviously the paints are quite thin. Just the second coat, how much so more solid that makes the uh, color. I know that the theory, you know the. Um, the catchphrase is two thin coats, but it really does make a difference, especially because if you don't go to the edges, that gives you some basic shading. I mean, he looks very, very pink at the moment, but that's our base color. So we're going to work this up. Just making sure we get everything nice and neat. So we're going to slap some metals on about. This is um, lead belcher. Again, the suit's drying, so we want to just get some more colours on there. That will really affect the um, the look. So it's nice to get some base colours in, so we can just make sure it all look it all looks right. I decided I wanted gold for the cane. I was going to go full silver, but I think that would be too much. So out comes the pink again, this time Pallid Witch Flash. Right. 
You could do sort of like a two to one mix, but this is a straight 50 50. I'm going proper um, into the, the contrast here. I'm going to go everywhere except the, um, the bottom shaded bits. Because he was just too pink. So we're going to get up to a nice sort of pastel colour. We're using an off-white instead of actual white because that will, um, again, give us a bit more of a shade to it. But we see here, I'm leaving like the, ed the edges where the, um, the suit detail is, like the stitch lines. And right on the edges because that's given us um, some shading, basic shading. We can see here quite nicely. Again, we've got lovely stitching on the sleeves, so we're going to make sure we keep them. And we're going to stick more pallid width flesh in. Try to brush off. Then we're going to work up on actual highlights. So this works with the fact that, A, we're, like I say, translucent colours. And then also um, we've put some white in, some pallid witch flesh into it, which will give us, like, proper um, highlighting. So you can see we're not going into all, all the crevices, just on the bits where the light falls naturally. So you can see on the back of his um, suit here the difference colour makes. It's a much, much nicer colour and um, not quite as uh, um, harsh on the eyes. So we've stuck a bit more Pallid Witch flesh in and we're just giving it very, very highlight highlights. Now it could go across the whole mini here, but I'm just picking out key bits just to sort of draw the eye. And... Semi-related tangent, we're going to go back and tidy up some wall of flash. But where, like I say, where we've gone quite thin coats, is this is given as a highlight as well. So we're going to the edge, we're not going all the way to the edges, we'll give them some detail. I want to try out a uh, brass for a couple of bits on it. So this is going straight over. We're looking at it. It doesn't provide enough contrast. So I think we want to go all uh, all the way up. But we're going to stick some highlighting on the metal bits first. So we went from lead belcher up to... Um, sorry, went from iron, iron warrior up to lead belcher. Just to give us some... Uh, bit of highlight. Then on to Retributor Gold because it's a really bright shiny gold is the brass just didn't work so a nice um, spot colour there. And some corn red just to pick out his tie because I forgot to paint his uh, tie. I like having the black shirt, red tie, pink suit. And we're going to pick his eye out. A bit of white. Then choose get a lovely black. Pick out his um, soul patch. Tidy up the hair a bit, and then uh, we'll pick out the pupil. Was considered not, but I think it's um, important, especially where he's got a bionic eye, just to pick the pupil out. And tidy up some of the metal work. I like having the, the metal ring on his um, walking stick. So now we come back to Hoeth. We're going to... It's po entirely possible if you're going for high over the top OSL. But here we're just giving the basic edges where it's over the light. So it's not too bright a, a glow. 
and it's just subtle enough that I think it will um it doesn't stand out stand out but just gives a hint and where the staff is by the little green light we'll do the same on a shoe and a staff I'll highlight a yellow I think that's just about it then so you'd put a touch of a highlight on the pineic eye but while we do the rim i'll say it'd be really good if you stick a like on thanks for watching and always have fun <laughs>